Hello, today I'm going to work through a set of questions which you might typically get in an A-level physics exam on materials covering Hooke's Law, Young's Modulus and Viscosity. The formulae which we will need are F equals Kx, which is Hooke's Law, stress is force over area, stress, sorry, strain is extension over length, Strain energy is a half Fx, which is also a half Kx squared. Young's modulus, E, is stress over strain, and that's force over area over extension over length, which is force times length over area times extension. Energy per unit volume is half the stress times the strain, which is essentially work over volume. And Stokes' law says that F is 6 pi eta rv. Question 1. You are given a wire and you are told that that wire will extend by 6 millimetres if it is subjected to a force of 15 newtons. And the question is, what will the force be, sorry, what will the extension be if the force is 20 newtons and what is the stiffness constant? Well, Hooke's law tells us that force is equal to the stiffness constant K times the extension. And so we know that when the force is 15 newtons, the extension is, 0 point, uh, is 6 millimetres, which is, of course, 0 0.006 metres. And that, of course, immediately gives us the stiffness constant, which is what we were asked for. It's the second part of the question. 15 divided by 0 0.006 and that's going to come out at 2,500 newtons per meter. But now we're asked the first part of the question which is what is the extension if the force is 20 newtons? Well the answer is that 20 will equal the stiffness constant 2,500, we just worked that out times the extension, which we now don't know. That gives that x is 20 over 2,500, which when reduced to millimetres becomes 8 millimetres extension. Question 2. We have a wire which is 5 centimetres in length. It becomes 8 centimetres in length if it has a force of 2.5 newtons applied and it becomes a wire of 12 centimetres in length if it has a force of 5 newtons applied. And the question is, is this wire subject to Hooke's law? And the answer you can see from inspection is no because Hooke's law says that the force is equal to Kx, where K is the stiffness constant. So the force is directly proportional to the extension. Here we get an extension of 3 centimetres. It goes from 5 to 8. So we get an extension of 3 centimetres with 2.5 newtons. Another 2.5 newtons should add another 3 centimetres to the length. But in fact it adds 4 centimetres to the length. Consequently, this wire is not obeying Hooke's law. Question three. We have a wire of length two metres and whose radius is one millimetre. And what I can tell you is that that wire will extend by five millimetres when it has a force of 350 newtons applied to it. And the question we are asked is, what is the tensile stress and what is the tensile strain? We recall that stress is force over area and strain is extension over original length. Consequently, we can say that stress is the force, which is 350 newtons, divided by the area of the wire, well, we know the radius of the wire is one millimetre. So the uh, area is going to be pi r squared, 
and r is 0 0.001 meters squared. And if you multiply that out, you will find that that comes to pretty much 111 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared. That's the stress. What is the strain? The strain is extension over original length. Well, we told you that the extension is five millimeters and that's got to be expressed as in meters. So that's 0 0.005 meters divided by the original length, which was two meters. And that comes out to 0 0.0025 and there are no dimensions to that because this is just a length divided by a length, so it is dimensionless. So we've now answered the question, this is the tensile stress, this is the tensile strain. Question four. We have a wire, and I can tell you that that wire will extend by four millimetres if it is subjected to a force of 60 newtons. And the question we are asked is, what is the stiffness constant and what is the strain energy? Well, we know from Hooke's law that F equals Kx, where F is the force, K is the stiffness constant and X is the extension. So K is going to be F divided by X. And in this case, the force is 60. The extension is four millimeters, which means that's 0.004 meters. And that will give you 15 times 10 to the 3 newtons per meter as the stiffness constant. The strain energy is half of F times X. So that will be a half of the force, which is 60, times the extension, which is 0 0.004 in meters and that's 0.12 joules. That is the strain energy, essentially the energy contained in the wire when it is subject to the 60 Newton's force. Question five. We have a spring, which we are gonna compress by four centimeters, and then we're gonna let it go, and it's going to hit a ball. The ball has a mass of 10 grams. And the question is, what is the velocity of the ball? So just to remind you, the spring we pull back four centimeters, we let it go, it springs forward, it hits the ball, and it causes the ball to move forward. And the question is, what is the velocity of the ball? I can tell you that the spring constant or the stiffness constant is 40. So the energy in the spring is, each, is equal to half kx squared, where a is the extension or compression, of course. So that's going to equal a half times k, which is 40, times the uh, compression, which is in meters 0 0.04 squared. And that comes to 0 0.032 joules. That energy is going to be given to the ball. And that will give the ball kinetic energy, which will be a half mv squared. That's for the ball. And so these two energies will be the same. And I can write that as saying the energy of the spring, which is a half times 40 times 0 0.04 squared, is going to equal a half the mass, which is 10 grams. So that's 0 0.04. 0.01 kilograms times the velocity, which is what we're trying to find, squared. That I think gives you that v squared is equal to 6.4, which means that v will be approximately 2.5 meters per second. So that's the speed of the ball as a consequence of the spring hitting it. Question six. A wire of length 2.5 meters will be extended by 3.6 millimeters if it has a force of 80 newtons applied to it. 
and the question we want is, incidentally, I can tell you that the radius of the wire is 0.3 millimeters. And what we're being asked is, what is the stress, what is the strain, and what is Young's modulus? The stress is force over area. Well, that's going to be the force, which is 80 newtons, divided by the area. The area is pi r squared. r is 0.3 millimeters, so that's 0.0003 meters, all squared. And that will give you, if you calculate it and get the, um, as I hope I have done correctly, 2.8 times 10 to the 8 newtons per meter squared. That's the stress, force over area, or the pressure really. The strain is just the extension over the original length. The extension was 3.6 millimeters, so that's 0.0036 meters, divided by the original length, which was 2.5 meters, and that gives you 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3, dimensionless of course because it's a length divided by a length. And Young's modulus, E, is stress over strain. So it is this rather large value here divided by this rather small value here. So it's going to give you an even larger value and it comes to 1.964 times 10 to the 11 newtons per meter squared, which is nearly two times 10 to the 11 newtons per meter squared. Question seven, we are given that Young's modulus is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 newtons per meter squared. We're told that the stress is three times 10 to the eighth newtons per meter squared. What is the strain? Then if the load is increased to 100 newtons, what is the cross-sectional area A? And what is the strain energy per unit volume? Let's start with the first one. What is the strain if we know Young's modulus and the stress? Well, we know that Young's modulus E is equal to stress over strain, which means if we are actually trying to find the strain, strain will be equal to stress divided by Young's modulus E. And that is going to be, since we know that the stress is three times 10 to the eighth newtons per meter squared, and Young's modulus is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th newtons per meter squared, that is going to give us a total strain of two times 10 to the minus three. No dimensions, of course, because strain is a length divided by length. The second part of the equation is, um, if the load is 100 newtons, what is the cross-sectional area? Well, stress is force over area. That means that area is force over stress. And we know that the force is 100 newtons, and we know that the stress is given as 3 times 10 to the 8. Consequently, the area must equal 33 times 10 to the minus 8 meters. So it should be a little m for meters, or sorry, meters squared, of course, because it's an area, cross sectional area. And the third, what is the strain energy per unit volume? Well, the strain energy per unit volume is equal to half the stress times the strain. And we know all those values, so that's a half times the stress, which is three times 10 to the eighth, times the strain which we calculated, which is two times 10 to the minus three, and that is going to be three times 10 to the five joules.
And the final question in this little sequence, we're going to take a beaker of fluid and we're going to put a ball bearing on the top and let the ball bearing fall through the fluid. And what we want to know is what is the viscous drag and what is the terminal velocity of the ball bearing. The key pieces of information that we'll need is that the radius of the ball bearing is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. The mass of the ball bearing is 6 times 10 to the minus 5 kilograms. The mass of fluid displaced when the ball bearing goes into the fluid is 3 times 10 to the minus 5 kilograms. And the viscosity of the fluid is 0.002. Now the upthrust, which is essentially the uh, pressure or the thrust that the fluid gives to the ball bearing as it comes into the fluid, is equal to the weight of fluid displaced. and that will be mg. Well, the mass of fluid displaced we've been given. So that's 3 times 10 to the minus 5 kilograms times g, which is 9.81. And that is 29.43 times 10 to the minus 5. That is the upthrust. The viscous drag, which is what we are asked to find, the viscous drag is simply going to be the weight of the ball bearing minus the upthrust. Well, the weight of the ball bearing we have been given, that is uh, the mass times g, which is going to be 6 times 10 to the minus 5, that's the mass of the ball bearing, times 9.81, that's the weight of the ball bearing, minus the upthrust, and the upthrust we just calculated. That's 29.43 times 10 to the minus 5. And this term here reduces to 5.886 times 10 to the minus 4. And this term here, we can just um, change that to 2.943 times 10 to the minus 4. So we've got both of them in terms of 10 to the minus 4. And then one minus the other gives you 2.943 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons. And that is the viscous drag on the ball bearing. Finally, we can say that Stokes's law tells us that the force is equal to 6 pi eta rv, where eta is the viscosity, r is the radius of the ball, where is it? R is the radius of the ball bearing, and V is the velocity, the terminal velocity, when all forces are balanced and the ball bearing is simply just moving at a steady speed through the fluid. There's no acceleration, so there's no net force. And we want to find that velocity, so the velocity is going to be the force divided by 6 pi eta R. The net force we just calculated 2.943 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 6 times pi times eta, which is the viscosity 0.002 times the radius, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Uh, that's something for the calculators, but if you calculate it, I hope you will find that that comes to 1.55 metres per second. Let me know if I've got that wrong. And so that is the velocity, the terminal velocity of the ball bearing as it falls through the fluid.